All right, hello everyone. How are y'all doing? All right. Welcome to the Salesforce Einstein keynote. Uh, before we get started, I just want to see a quick show of hands. How many of you all know what Salesforce Einstein is? Okay, pretty good. And how many of you use uh, some of the Salesforce Einstein products? Okay, we got one in the front. So uh, today we're going to talk to you all about what Salesforce Einstein is. We're going to talk about how you could use it in your own roles. Uh, and then we're going to do a live demo. We have some special guests with us, some, some members of the Einstein team. Uh, we have one of our customers here who actually just became uh, one of our Einstein champions. And we'll talk about that program in a little bit. And then we'll talk about the roadmap, some open pilots, and then some helpful resources for you all. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, this is our forward-looking statement slide. You might have seen this before, but what it's basically, sa basically saying is that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and to please make any purchasing decisions on products and services that are currently available. So before we dive in, I just wanted to, us to take a step back and think about AI more broadly. And you know, if you think about it, AI is something that helps us in our own everyday personal lives. For example, when you wake up in the morning, you might ask your Google Home what the weather is. Or you might ask Google Home to play your favorite playlist, your morning playlist, to get, help you get you pumped up for work. And then after you get ready for work, you might use, your, uh, you might use an app like Google, Google Maps, uh, Waze, to help you find the best route to get to work. Uh, for me, I just moved to a new city in California. And um, I know I need to figure out what the best route to get to work is. So I pulled up my uh, Google Maps app, and it provided with me with the recommended route to, to get to work. And then before I get into work, I want to make sure I get my morning coffee. And so I'll open up my Starbucks app, and I'll see a list of recommended drinks based off past purchases that I've made. And I can order directly right from the app. And uh, when, I get it to, when I get to Starbucks, my drink will be ready to go. And so. These are the different ways that AI has, AI has assisted us, has assisted me, in our own personal lives. But the question is, how do we bring AI into the workplace? And so there's a few different ways it can help us while we're in the workplace. If you work in sales, service, marketing, or commerce, there are certain types of questions that you might ask. For example, if you work in sales, you might be asking yourself, which lead should I focus on? Or in services, you probably deal with case, manage it, case management. You know, which cases are the highest priority? How should I prioritize and route my cases? If you work in marketing, you'll be asking maybe, you know, what's the email content that best resonates with my users? Uh, how do I really increase website engagement? And then for commerce, you know, you might be asking, you know, what are the right products to recommend? How do I make my search smarter for customers? And so, you know, AI is something that, of course, helps us in our own personal lives, but it's also something that can help us in our work lives and really help us, you know, do our best job in work. And so, you know, with all this in mind, that's what Salesforce Einstein does. It helps us with those little things. It helps us with those questions. And really, again, helps us bring our best selves to work. And it does so through our discovery capability. With Einstein Discovery, it allows you to discover hidden patterns and insights in your data. For example, let's say you're a marketer. And you want to understand, you know, uh, how your campaigns are performing or what trends are driving your business. You know, you want to understand what's working, what's not working. And then being able to make predictions. Uh, with Einstein Prediction Builder, you can make a prediction on any standard or custom object in Salesforce. So for example, you know, we had a booth out here. Some of you, did anyone attend the workshop this morning? Yep. So um, some of the ways that folks have used Einstein Prediction Builder is to, for example, predict whether or not a customer will be late on their invoice payment. That's one of the ways uh, customers have used Einstein Prediction Builder. And then recommendations. You know, when you make a prediction, you know, well, what can you do with that prediction, right? Uh, you can't do anything with it unless you take some sort of action. And so that's where Einstein Next Best Action comes in to really generate that next best action or the recommended steps to take. And then lastly, automation. Being able to take that AI and place it into your workflow. And so on this next slide, this is one of my favorite slides, and what it's doing is it's basically taking all these different concepts I've shared and really put it into perspective. And so uh, this is a sales cloud instance that's customized with some of the Einstein platform features. And so, you know, as an agent, if you're looking at your instance, you can see the net promoter score, and you can understand, you know, what's really driving that score, what's, what's driving that, what trends are driving that net promoter score. And then, to make it easy, 
Then you can predict the, likely, the likelihood of a customer to renew their contract with you. And not only are they going to renew their contract with you, but what can you do about it? What's that recommended action to take uh, when you meet with your customer? And then lastly, automation. Being able to take those repetitive tasks and automate them. And so I, uh, Thierry Dono Golancer, he's on the team. He's going to be presenting a little bit later. He's going to really dive into this. But I just want to show you this slide to, give, to really show you like the full uh, spectrum of Einstein products. And so if we're looking at it from left to right, on the left-hand side, you'll see what's called of our out-of-the-box out AI. And those are pre-packaged solutions to meet different lines of business. For example, whether you work in sales, marketing, uh, for Einstein for sales, you can predict whether or not a lead is going to convert into an opportunity. Or for Einstein for marketing, you can predict the likelihood of a customer to open an email. And then we have what we call our customizable AI. We have tools for admins, for developers. For admins, we have tools like Einstein Prediction Builder, Einstein Discovery. Uh, that allows you to build those customizable AI solutions with no coding required. And then for our developers out there, we have programmatic APIs where you can add deep learning like Einstein Vision and Einstein Language. And so again, Thierry's going to go deeper in this a little bit later, but I just want to show you the full spectrum of Einstein products. And one of those products that I want to mention uh, is Einstein Voice. Has anyone heard of Einstein Voice before? And so what does it allow you to do? It allows you to talk to Salesforce. And so you can log notes, uh, excuse me, update data in Salesforce, create tasks. And so for example, the way it would work is you would open up your Salesforce mobile app, open up the voice assistant, and you would essentially start logging your notes. And after you log those notes, you might say something like, let's say you had a, you're a sales rep, right? And you, had, you just had a great customer meeting, and you want to be able to log those notes because you don't want to manually log those notes in Salesforce. And so the way it would work, again, you'd open up the Salesforce mobile app, open up Einstein Voice Assistant, and start logging those notes. So you would say something like, you know, I had a great meeting with Jessica at Acme Corporation. She had some good strategies for the year, and we'll need to follow up with her in two weeks. Action item, follow up with her in two weeks. Action item, change the stage to qualification. And once you log all those notes, uh, that's all cool, but you would then click this analyze button, and what it would do is it would analyze what you said and parse those to the right fields in Salesforce. It, uh, it would update the, uh, the stage of that opportunity and create those tasks for you, which is really cool. So I've talked a little bit about the Einstein products, but now I'd like to introduce to the stage uh, Olfa Karatz and Edward Sandoval to give you a demo of some of the Einstein platform products in action. And so Olfa and Ed, take it away. Hi, everyone. You hear me well, right? OK. So my name is Olfa Karat, and I'm a solution engineer on Einstein and Salesforce. And let me start today by a question to you. Where is our ultimate promise to you as customers? It is to bring you closer to a client, to your customers, by bringing relevant content, right? Well, Einstein is not any different. And this is what I'm going to show you today with the demo, with the, f with the help of Ed. And for this demo, I'm going to turn into a service agent working for a big telco company. And in the middle of the day, I'm receiving a call from Anna. Anna, who is a long-lasting customer. But something caught my attention on the 360 view uh, page of Anna. In fact, she has a very high likelihood of attrition, 27%. How did I come up with the score? I simply asked a yes-no question to Einstein Prediction Builder. Will my customer churn? And the, answer, and the answer of Einstein Prediction Builder to this question is a probability, a probability of attrition in this case. And this score is also explained by the main factor of this prediction. So I really have a problem with Anna. Anna is leaving the company. I have to do something. Einstein will also help me to find the solution for this problem. In fact, you see here in the screen Einstein recommendation that are pushed by next best action. They are personalized product recommendation. Those product recommendation will allow you to keep your customer satisfied and to retain them in your company. 
And one of the advantages of next-best action is that it's completely integrated in your processes. So, I now present the offer to Anna. She's very happy with it. I can directly enroll her in the subscription of, for this product without leaving the contact page. So, I just press accept. So we saw here that there was a problem with, uh, with Anna. Anna is leaving the company. This is what Einstein prediction said. Einstein also gave me the solution, which is this personalized product recommendation. And I could enroll her, all that without leaving her contact page. Once I've done that, you see here the 27% went down to only 7%. The attrition rate went down. It was instantly recalculated. And why that did it decrease? It's because Einstein Prediction Builder knows by looking at the past data that the customer who enroll to such a auto renewal, this type of product, have a very low risk of leaving the company. Okay? So now, the question that you may ask is, how can I really trust this model? So let's inspect it together. For that, we go to the configuration and then you have, for every prediction that you have on your org, a scorecard. In this scorecard, you see, first of all, a confidence score. This is what you see. It's a great one, so we are around 85 as a confidence score, so we can absolutely trust this model. But you can also see the explanation. So you see the main factors that explain the score. And the first one, if we, yeah, begin to, yes. The first one is contact mouth to mouth. So what does it say? It says that the customers who pay on a monthly basis have a high risk of churn. Makes sense, right? If a customer wants to really stay with us, he would pay on a yearly or a long-term basis. Second, if you're a data scientist or a data analyst, you probably need to dig in the parameters of your model. For that, you go to the details page, and here you see, for every single factor, the impact and the correlation with the churn, in this case. And you can even, if you're a data scientist, know which model is behind all those predictions. And in this case, it's random forest. So to summarize this first part, we saw Einstein Prediction Builder and Next Best Action combined in your processes, in the screens of the business users. We saw also how we could inspect the model uh, that we have on Einstein Prediction Builder. Let's now see how we configured all that. We go behind the scenes and see how we configured both functionalities. Let's start with Einstein Prediction Builder. First thing to do, of course, is to create a new prediction. And you could have multiple predictions on your org. You give it a name, and then you select the object where the historical data that the model will learn from is stored. So in our case, it's contacts, because we are going to predict churn for the contacts. You can also here in this page segment your data to have different segments, a different model per segment. So for example, if you know that the behavior of your customer are completely different from a country to another, and that you have two countries, France and Germany, it makes complete sense to split them here on this page. Next, you will specify the field on the contact that you want to predict. In our use case, it's the churn. You can also specify the data chunk or the data part that your model will learn from. So we chose to only take into account, in this case, the customer who have been with us for more than a year, because they are the customer that we know most about. The next page, we will choose the field that will be used on the contact to build the model. Of course, you can leave them all there, because Einstein Prediction Builder will look for every one of them, the correlation with the churn. But if you know if some fields uh, will introduce bias, then it makes sense to take them out. And also, if you have legal or ethical rules that don't allow you, for example, to use the personal information on your customer, then it's time here to take them out. So we will take out, for example, here, the Facebook 
ID. And you're almost done. Next, you give, of course, a name to the field where this score will be stored. Okay, probability of turn. And here you, you also, on, you're done with creating your model. You have the summary so that you're sure that everything you wanted to do is there. And something nice was added recently is this data checker. So Einstein Prediction Builder will tell you if you have enough data and enough negative and positive example to create the model. Of course, it's very important to have both negative and positive. And now you're done with creating your model. In a few hours, you will have a score on every contact. And let's go to next best action. Next best action is a tool that will allow you to combine your business rules and scores coming from artificial intelligence to create personalized recommendation. The place to configure your next best actions is called Strategy Builder. This is what we see here. It's a drag and drop interface. Once again, no code at all to write to create your next best actions. And let me explain the example of what was used for Anna that we saw at the beginning of the, of the demo. The final output of this flow is, of course, those product recommendation, the winning one that will allow me to decrease my attrition rate. Those recommendation will only appear under certain conditions. So it will only appear if the customer has more than 20% attrition rate. This is why for Anna, at the beginning she was at 27%, we had those recommendations. Then we have, if we now go back to the flow, two types of products, auto renewer or upsell. And for those products, we have business rules to verify before speaking or before offering them to our customers. So for example, it doesn't make any sense to give a streaming offer, to speak about a streaming offer to a customer who doesn't have internet. So we saw here, we have business rules on our products. We have scores coming from AI. They are combined together to create personalized recommendations. So to sum it up, we saw two functionalities of Einstein in this demo. Einstein Prediction Builder and Einstein Next Best Action. The two combined together and integrated in the screens and the processes of your business users will allow you to predict some of the behavior of your customers, to take predictive or corrective actions, and to bring you at the end closer to your customer because all your content is relevant to them. So that's it for the demo. Thank you very much, Ed, for your help. And it's time for me to hand it over to our, uh, one of our Einstein PMs. Please welcome Mr. Thierry donneau golancer Thank you, Olfa, and thank you, Ed. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So first of all, awesome job, Olfa. One of her first times speaking on stage. I think she did an amazing job, didn't she? Yeah. She did an amazing job. So I'm very happy to be here today, but I'm even happier by who I'm going to introduce. So as uh, Rajiv mentioned, we just uh, launched this new Einstein Champions program just uh, last week, I think, right? A few days ago, all right. And we have 25 in the whole world today, right, 25? And two of them are in Paris. One is actually Jean-Michel from Sharing Picks, maybe many of you know. And the other one is here, coming all the way from Paris to see us, is uh, Johan from ZenConnect. Please come, Johan. Is your mic working? Yes, it's working. All right, Johan. Hello, everyone. Great, great to have you. It's always a pleasure uh, to welcome you know, a trailblazer in AI just like you. <laughs> yes, so thank you. I've been working with you closely for the past two years, so I know all the cool things you do. Yeah. But I think for this audience, maybe we can start, if you can explain a bit what is ZenConnect. Yes, of course. So my name is Johan Le Cornet. I'm CTO. I'm French. Yes, my accent is funny and my English. So ZenConnect is a small, medium company based in Paris. And we offer for B2B uh, market the network solution, router, switch, Wi-Fi, etc. Managed on the cloud. 
and offer services. Uh, example, the phone or um, modify the uh, or grip the firmware, etc. So um, we are more twenty. Uh, uh, sorry, we, uh, we are more 14 people work at Then Connect, uh, and we work with many companies in the world, for example, Burger King, Louis Vuitton, etc. So Then Connect, small company but growing very fast. <laughs> yes. Right? Uh, only 40 people, lots of customers, and uh, when you reach that stage, that's kind of what you started to look at Salesforce and Einstein. So can you tell us a bit like, more about your journey with Salesforce? I'd help you, and then we're going to talk more about the Einstein part. Yeah, so we start uh, one year ago on the Einstein sales because this is a simple uh, feature for activate and use this one. Einstein to help the sales team because Einstein to check the whole opportunity and push the opportunity scoring for help, okay, what is a positive instance or negative instance on this opportunity. Einstein to copy and paste example for create contact on Salesforce. Uh, and so, yes, this is an example. This is a screenshot on Cell Connect organization. So ju just to make sure people understand, this is not a demo anymore. This is actually Johan's real org, right, yeah. that is showing. Yeah. So it's, uh, I think you hide a bit of information yeah. because he has like, uh, you know, his own private business information. But all the screenshots you're going to see are actually screenshots from his real orgs and how his salespeople, his service agents use Einstein today. Just yes. Yep. Thank you, yes. So, um, and because this is a great feature on Einstein sales, because Einstein to copy and paste, for example, is a contact on account, because Einstein is interconnect uh, between Google and Salesforce environment. And after sales, uh, department, we use Einstein on services, departments for... Well, before we go into service, can you explain yeah. a bit to the audience, like, what, what are we looking at? Like, what is this score? How do you use it? Yes, yeah, so for this core to help the salespeople to understand, okay, my, my opportunity, I need to, to develop the time or not time for gain or not gain this opportunity. Because it's not simple for the human, so okay, uh, this opportunity, the, the, the duration is very long, so okay, I continue or not continue to develop uh, the business. And by Einstein, the screen helps the people to, okay, let's go for close and warn this opportunity or not. So basically, Einstein looked at your history of opportunities? Yes, all yeah. opportunities, all industries, on in instance. And then, so how do, how do your agents use that? Like, do they just look at the top uh, opportunities, or what, what is the process? Yes, for, it's possible to, to, to create uh, our own list page, okay, on, on, on opportunity object. And the sales people to, okay, I, example, for, for see the eyes, high level, high scoring, or, or not. And to select, okay, this is my opportunity and it's important for me to, to, to warn this week. So I go, I check all information, and example, I check the opportunity scoring. Mm -hmm. So it helps them day to day prioritize, yeah. spend their time more wisely. Yeah, okay. Of course. Okay, so that's an awesome use case, but that's only the first of many use cases you're gonna see. So can you tell us a bit about uh, your agents? How do your service agents yeah. use Einstein? Yes, we use um, Einstein service agent for help agent to select the best value on the field. Because for the technical no, um, level one, it's not simple to select, okay, uh, the, the best value or the value is this one on this field. Um, and this is important for us for many reasons. Uh, an example for the data quality. Um, because as for the manager, I need to, to have the best data quality and the best information between the field and the cases. So that's, is that what we see on the left here, basically? Yeah. This, so we see these Einstein recommendations applied? Yes. And Agent, if select this value or change this one, and Einstein to learn all back, okay. yes, in backlog. So, so just to make it clear, like, your agents in that case didn't have to do anything. Like, Einstein pre-filled these values yeah. For them, right? And then they yes. can change if there's a mistake. Yes. Or. Right. That's pretty awesome. All right. Do you have any other stuff that you're doing with Einstein at ZenConnect? Uh, so, um, yes, my recommendation to, 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 for example, I activate Einstein on the billing and financial department mm -hmm. uh, for check, example, all billing and invoice and create billing by billing the Einstein prediction builder and Einstein recommendation because. Yes, for the financial, it's not simple to, 
to to manage the billing and due date is a, uh, a touchy subject, right? Like yes. It's a touchy subject for customers. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you haven't paid us. Hey, you still haven't paid us. Hey, come yes. on, pay us. Yes, yes, absolutely. This is not simple. Um, and by Einstein, Einstein to help the collaborator for, okay, the guys, um, this billing is not paid at time. Why? Because um, on the industry, in the industry or this customer before uh, the old billing on invoice, etc. And my recommendation, and no, this billing is not paid at time. And so, so what is what is this score here? Yes, this score. So this score is created by Einstein and select on administration the best field to predict this one. Example: the name, the customer, uh, what is the industry, what is the balance, what is the amount, what is the due date, etc. And Einstein to create the model and push automatic billing per billing this prediction. Mm -hmm. So for those, I, I saw a few people who joined the uh, workshop this morning. So it's very similar to the prediction we put together this morning, right? This morning we tried to predict whether someone would show up or not to a medical appointment. This one is, which is a yes or no question, is the person going to show up or not to the appointment? This is very similar. Is this customer, each, each customer, each line is a customer or an invoice, you know, are they going to pay on time or not, basically? And the higher the score, the more likely they will pay late. That's, that's yeah. basically what you're using it for. Yes. All right. So let's see what else you have here. So. Yes, this is an interesting screen for administration mm -hmm. uh, on Salesforce because this is simple to create or modify or manage my prediction. Uh, so this is important to select the best field on, in object. And we have possible to check the prediction quality, to check, okay, my prediction is very good and I have not need to, to, to change completely this prediction. So, so it's just what uh, Alpha was showing us earlier, right? Yeah, yes, Except right. That's, that's basically running it in your org. Yeah, yeah and, and this is not code because, uh, yes, we, we have not need to, to, crea to create the specific code or add code on, in my organization. This is only click. So, yes, and after we have possible to create process builder for check this, okay, the Einstein scoring is this one and create the process, our process. So if you look at this process, actually it's kind of interesting yeah. because people also always ask, okay, I create this prediction, but what do I do with this prediction? Great, I know this customer is going to pay late. What am mm -hmm. I going to do? So here we can see this process builder, right? It's based on the score, right? And if you look at the branching, so basically based on the score, you s it looks like you're sending different messages to yeah. each other, right? Absolutely. So for, for, for create the specific attention on this billing for the people, okay? Guys, this billing is possible for overdue, for overdue and pitch check or call this customer, etc. Yeah, that's awesome. So then an, another question is uh, oftentimes people again ask, okay, this AI looks really cool, but does it actually matter? Like, does it help me? Does it, what's the return of investment of putting this thing together? Yeah. So I know you actually, at ZenConnect, you measured, like yeah. you've been, you put that in place like a year ago, I think, yeah. something like that. So you measured the impact, right? Like, mm -hmm. So what did you see when you put that in place? The first major impact is the cash flow because uh, by this prediction or all ecosystem in Salesforce, we have possible to, to check the metric and check billing per billing, customer per customer, is paid at time or not. Um, the last year, uh, at the Dreamforce, we speak um, uh, with my uh, CFO uh, on the stage, and she speak and she share, okay, um, we, we gain more 29 days of the cash flow. 29 days of yes. cash flow, you said? Yes, yes, because we have by Salesforce and Einstein ecosystem, etc., we track all information on my customer. So it's pretty awesome. I mean, you put that in place, and a year later, you're saving one month of cash flow. Right? Yes, Ready. we reduce the cash flow. So, so and we work every day to, to, to check uh, other possibility, to check um, other issue, etc., and how Einstein help our company to develop. So that's my next question. Like, yeah. what's next? Like, you. <laughs> Are you like done, like you're a master Jedi of AI skills and uh, ZenConnect is like, or do you have more ideas of what to do? So for the future, uh, we would like to develop Einstein vision because yes, be, be, because for the people, it's simple to understand the picture uh, and comparison of the world. Um, and I would like to work Einstein voice. Uh, yes, yes, because for the human, it's simple to speak with my computer, uh, yes, it's not simple to, to, to select my keyboard and right, mouse. Is Anshan Voice going to be able to understand the French accent? Yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> gonna, we're going to have to work on it, right? 
some tweaks. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, last question for you, Johan. Yeah. Um, you know, you came here to share your experience. Thanks again. Um, some of people in the audience, they haven't started yet uh, with AI. If you can tell us like a few pieces of advice of, based on your experience, you know, you've been playing with this tool for like two years, what would you tell them? Yes, my recommendation um, in French, French, allez-y, c'est super simple. <laughs> He just said, go for it, it's easy. <laughs> so, thank you, Johan. Thank, thank you so, so much. much, thank you. All right, so a few more things from me before I give it back to, to Rajiv. So again, kind of taking a step back, right? Like we saw, you know, Rajiv's intro, we saw the awesome demo from uh, Alpha and Ed, and then you just heard the story of, uh, of Zen Connect, and you may start to understand like what it's all about, right? And I think a lot of people will agree with this, uh, whatever is said on this slide, right? Like we live in a, in a time where there's just too much information. Like just a few decades ago, there was the other problem. We didn't have enough information. Power was coming from actually having access to this scarce information. Like the person who had access to this scarce information was like the master of all, right? But today it's the other way around. We are literally drowning in information and 99.99999% of it is completely irrelevant, a distraction, right? And the power comes from this mass of data, this mass of information, bringing out what really matters, right? We're all drowning in data and email, we can't keep up. You know, probably like during this presentation, I'm receiving 100 email right now, I'm sure. Like I'm gonna cry when I go back to my office, right? So then I'm gonna have to make these decisions, you know, like which of these am I going to actually look at, prioritize and so on, right? And that's what AI is about, you know, it's really nothing magic, incredible. It's all about helping us with our productivity, you know? We need to improve our productivity because we just have too much information we have to deal with it. And what AI does is you have all this information which we call structured and unstructured. So structured is kind of like your CRM data in Salesforce, right? Uh, information about your customers. But there's a lot more also in unstructured data, like all the emails you receive, all this free text, all this voice uh, phone calls that are recorded, all these images that you receive, right? There's a lot of very interesting information in there. So we're gonna take all this information, do some AI algorithms, right? And then out of it, what comes out? It comes out actually stuff you can use, helpful information, actionable insights, right? Like, which are my high priority tasks? What should I do when I'm finishing with you guys in the next two, three hours I have before I go on weekend, right? What should I prioritize? Which are my leads with the highest potential? Which are my customers at risk, like we saw with Alpha? You know, what's my, predict what's my forecast? What is the next best action I want to take? So this is AI. AI is you have all this mass of data, too much, you don't know how to deal with it and you change that into actually actionable insights. And as we saw earlier, we're trying to make it easy for everyone. That's what we call democratize AI. We have a whole spectrum of solutions you know, that we propose. We started by the left side, what we call these out-of-the-box solutions. For example, for sales, like we saw, Johan was using scoring of opportunities, right? Or predictions on cases. So we have you know, solutions for all the you know, sales service marketing use cases. On the other side, other end of the spectrum, we have tools for developers as well. So we have APIs to analyze images, to analyze language. But the sweet spot, to me at least, what makes me like, get up and be excited every day about my work is the middle part, right? It's like, how do you make these tools, like Prediction Builder, that you just saw, like Nextbex Action, that give you the power, right? But it's not too complex. You don't have to code, you don't have to know Python, you don't have to, to have a a PhD in data science from Stanford, but still you can do something that's very helpful to your business, right? So this is actually very hard to do, like I'm on the product team, right? And this is a true, like, interesting product question. How do you make these things usable, but not too simplistic? If it's too simplistic, it won't work for 99% of cases because you guys all have very custom questions, very different predictions you want to make, right? And if you make it too complex, then, you know, then you might as well be a developer, right? So this is the sweet spot. And that's where I think we're spending a lot of effort in these products. So now I'm gonna kind of give you an overview of what's coming uh, in the next few releases, uh, so that you know. Uh, and I'm gonna focus on the tools that actually Johan told the boss and uh, this platform tools, right? So the first one is for sales. So we saw the screenshot from uh, Johan's org. It was uh, the scoring of opportunity. But actually, if you use Sales Cloud today, there's really like a lot of features that you can use, right? It's one of our more mature products. That's where we started. So you get scoring of leads. You get scoring of opportunities. You get recommended connection. Who can connect you to the person you want to talk to? 
you get insights in your emails, like which ones have a meeting request, which ones are important, things like that. You get um, reports and smart dashboards, and you get predictive forecasting also. And also the good news is this one, if you are actually using uh, Sales Cloud, it's easy to try out and get a sense of whether it's going to work for you or not. So you just have to go to that link. It's called Einstein Readiness uh, uh, Assessor, EinsteinReadiness.Salesforce.com. And like in a few minutes, you're going to get an assessment that's going to tell you, hey, based on the data you have, you know, you're a good candidate to try, for example, lead scoring, opportunity scoring. That one, maybe you're missing a little bit of data, but you'll get the basic information. So in the world of service, we started a little later, but there's a lot coming, right? There's a lot of pilots, especially. So if anything you hear me talk about you're interested in, just come to talk to me after the session, and we can discuss about you joining the pilot. So again, here, it's all about helping the service agents, right? So we saw for sales, you know, we gave them this score so that they know how to prioritize their times, for example. Here, it's about helping the agent. So being a service agent, I think, is a tough job, right? Like, you have to read all these emails, a lot of information, there's a high turnover, so a lot of new people, we don't really know the business really well. So we're trying to help these uh, agents with some useful information, right? And the one we started with is at the top, is called case classification. So that's the one that Johan showed you, right? A new case comes in, and you have like five, six fields that you use to triage. Instead of having each agent reach each mail, you know, in details, trying to figure out the right triage, the right category, Einstein takes care of it, right? So then you can pass it on quicker, to the next uh, person who's actually going to solve the case. And in that same vein, we are also suggesting articles, suggesting what is the right reply uh, to give to that customer. We have a next best action, which Alpha talked about. So, you know, what is it that you want to do with your customer now? Uh, since you know the problem, maybe you want to do an upsell offer, for example. And we also have our Einstein bots. I don't know if the person is in the room, but I know there was a session this morning about, you know, this Einstein bot as well. So a bit more details on these, because they are new. So case classification already exists. It's actually GA. You can use it. But we are doing some major improvements. Uh, one is uh, faster scoring. So today it scores on an hourly basis. Now it's going to be near real time. So as the case comes in right away, Einstein will look at it, classify it, done. Right? And the other one is auto-routing. So when you get to a good level of you know, confidence on the results of Einstein, you can decide, well, I'm going to skip this uh, kind of manual verification altogether. You know, just apply the right uh, information to the fields and pass it on to the next person. Right? Of course, that reduces a lot of bottleneck, makes you able to answer faster to your customer, which improves their satisfaction. So this one is in pilot. If you're interested, just let me know. The other one I mentioned is article recommendations. So you actually already have today um, kind of suggested articles, but it's working just based on keywords. So it's pretty simple. If a customer uses the right keywords, you may get something useful. But this one is actually going to the next level, trying to actually understand what it's talking about. So even if a customer doesn't really use the exact keyword, you may have the right recommendation. So the agent can look on the sidebar and then see you know, helpful information to help answer the case faster, also in pilot. This one, even maybe more interesting, harder, is reply recommendation. OK, I guess this question from my customer about random topic ABC, what should I say, right? And so this is based on you know, past responses that were given to similar cases. Super helpful for new agents, because as we know in these jobs, people don't sell the job very long oftentimes. You know? And so they may see a common case, but they've never seen it before, right? And so that case will bring you the right answer to give, also in pilot. Einstein Prediction Builder, my favorite one, of course, uh, that you saw demoed earlier. So it's already pretty simple. I mean, we had a bunch of people um, in the workshop this morning, and they can tell you, you can talk to them, they can tell you that they actually were able to set up a prediction in just a few minutes. Uh, but we want to make it even easier, you know, because still today, like, uh, there's, you, know, you have to kind of think a bit more about uh, like some of the filters you put together. So we're creating something called Outcome Builder, which basically will guide you more. It's like a more guided experience to set up those predictions. Also, we observe that you know, there's this five to 10 super common use cases that everybody wants to do, right? Like everybody wants to know if they're gonna be paid late for some reason. Everybody wants to score their opportunity. Everybody wants to predict uh, if they're gonna lose their customers or not. So hey, why don't we just create a template? This way it's out of the box, you know, it's ready for you. And the last one, giving you a bit more detail, the record reasons you actually saw on the demo by Alpha, is, this is forward looking. Today you don't, you don't get this level of detail, so this is coming you know, in release. And this is just like more examples. Like customers 
use Prediction Builder for like a lot of different things. You know, uh, I'm not going to read them all, but you know, it could be in sales, for example, scoring opportunities. If you're in service, it could be predicting the likelihood to escalate a case or the time it's going to take to resolve a case. If you're in finance, what is the risk of a contract? If you're in human resources, what is the likelihood to lose an employee? If you're in education, what is the likelihood that this student is going to complete his or her education? If you're in travel industry, what is the likelihood that this customer is going to become a frequent flyer or frequent traveler, and so on, right? And this is, these are all like uh, these are not like things we invented. These are actually things that uh, we see customers doing, right? Today, because we have lots of customers using that for a long, long tail of uh, use cases. And actually, today I have two announcements, uh, real breaking news, <laughs> in a way. Like, they've never been announced anywhere else, uh, so we're going to be the first uh, to know in the world uh, about that, because it's just new from last week. Uh, and so the first one is that we are now uh, compliant. So we have the um, SOC 2 and ISO. Uh, certifications, we just got them, so that could be helpful for your business. And there's a bunch of other um, certifications like HIPAA that we are working on. And the other one, maybe even more interesting for people in this room, is about uh, data residency. Uh, so now, when you use Ancient Prediction Builder, your data stays in uh, an EMEA data center, doesn't go to the US or anywhere else. So that was a high requested feature, so I'm very excited to announce it today for the first time, and it will make you know, life easier for, uh, I think, European customers, which is good. All right, almost finished. Nextbex action uh, was uh, demoed by Alpha also. What I like about Nextbex action is it's a very simple way to uh, make your predictions actionable. You know, because when you create your predictions, you have to think for you have to think through what are you going to do with it, right? So an easy way is you put it in like a widget, you put it in a list view, right? That's all, all good. But if you if you merge them with some business rules, then it becomes very powerful. That's what Alpha showed you, right? She had this attrition prediction, but she used it into a bigger kind of cross-sell, upsell scenario. And so that's next, next, next section, and we are working on some improvements uh, to it, and we don't have very good uh, marketing names yet because it's just product names so far. So product people are good at building products, but they suck at, at naming products. So right now we just call it Einstein sort, Einstein load, but basically it's about sorting offer by their likelihood to be accepted by the customer. So if you have like 20 offers, you know, which one is Rajiv uh, likely to accept? But, and Ed might observe my want a completely different one, right? So it's about doing that. Think of it, it's kind of like Amazon recommendations, you know, product recommendations, very similar. And the last one is uh, platform services. So as, as I said, you know, we want to make it easy for admin, people who have no special coding skill to create apps, but we don't forget about people who have a bit more technical skills, right? And so we want to make some of these services uh, easier to access uh, by, via Apex. You know, a lot of people know Apex in the Salesforce ecosystem. And so via Apex, you'll be, for example, able to call some of our vision or language uh, models. You'll be able to do translation. You'll be able to do OCR, optical character recognition. So there's more and more coming in that realm. So you'll have access to additional kind of machine learning categories of predictions via Apex. So now I'm going to leave you with that thought. You know, we, told, we gave you lots of ideas, lots of uh, exciting use cases, but probably like most of them, you know, they don't apply to your business. Maybe some do, but I'm sure you have your own, right? And you saw how easy it was to create them. So what are you going to build with Einstein? And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Rajiv. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Thierry. Still with us? Can we just give a round of applause to all of our presenters, to Johan, Olfa, Ed, and Thierry? <laughs> Woo! All right, so a few last things. Uh, you, if you stopped by the booth, you might have heard us talk about this Einstein Champions program. Has anyone heard of the Einstein Champions program before? Okay, well, let's talk about the Einstein Champions program. So uh, there are folks in the community, folks like Johan, folks like John Michel, that you know, are passionate about innovating with Einstein. They're using the products today. And not only are they using it, but they want to teach others about Einstein. And so they'll present at events like this, like Johan just did. They might deliver workshops. 
Uh, they might deliver uh, a webinar series. They might start a blog. But it's all about educating the community of how to use and get started with Einstein. And so for any folks you know, that, are, again, are passionate, that are using the product today and want to teach others, we want a way to recognize those individuals as Einstein champions. And in return, you get access to really cool swag, like this awesome hoodie that Johan's wearing. Uh, you get to collaborate more closely with our PMs, like Thierry, like Ed. Uh, you get a special Dreamforce experience. So there's a lot of cool benefits that you get access to as an Einstein champion. And so if you are interested in the program, there's an interest form that you could jot down right here. And maybe today you know a little bit about Einstein, but want to get to that point of being a champion. What I'd encourage you to do is continue learning. We have a monthly webinar series that we run. I'll talk about that more in a little bit. There's some great content on Trailhead. But start learning more about Einstein. And then maybe at one point, you're delivering a, uh, a sessions at events like this all around Einstein. And we'd be looking for folks like you. And so if you're, you are interested, you can see the short URL right here. I briefly talked about the webinar series. Uh, we just started a webinar series a few months ago, and it's all about ch uh, training admins, developers, on how to use and get started with the Einstein platform. And so next Tuesday, uh, we're going to have Bobby Brill. He's one of our product managers for Einstein Discovery. He's going to talk about how to get started with Einstein Discovery. And so again, this is a monthly webinar series. Uh, and you know, with regards to the topics we're covering, we're going to talk to the PMs, of course. But we want to hear from folks like you. What do you want to hear from our Einstein PMs? What do you want to learn more about Einstein? And then we can incorporate that into the webinar series. And what I also mentioned about the webinar series, has anyone seen those Einstein plushies? Does anyone want an Einstein plushie? OK. Well, if you attend this webinar series, we're going to play a game on the call. Uh, we're going to use Kahoot. Some of you might have used Kahoot before. But we're going to give you a chance to win one of these cool Einstein plushies. And if you haven't seen one, come by the booth, and I'll show you what it looks like. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for attending today. Thank you.